Hello, welcome to a new series of videos where I plan on going through the action packs. Often a good place for a new pair to start when um, playing Infinity. I've seen plenty of questions online, people asking, you know, what what do I need to start the game with? What points are they worth and so on? And the point of these videos is to go through the action pack, explain what models are in the pack, what they look like, because often models in Infinity can be hard to sort of work out what they are, what the stats are and what the points are for that box and finally also how that box can be expanded into a sort of functional 300 point army now a few things first of all these action packs are not all the same points value and they definitely aren't all optimal um i'm going to follow a few rules to do with packs first of all i'm going to follow the rule of wizardwig the idea that what you see is what you get so I'm going to minimal, uh, have, sorry again, minimize the proxying um, that we do for it because a new player will probably want to have models and they know what's on them. That said, it's worth mentioning that you can proxy an infinity. So, for example, once you're used to how a model works, you probably want to mess about with these weapon options and, and try different options out. Um, as I said, these aren't particularly well optimized. Uh, the box is what you have. Also, um, five teams are a big deal in Infinity, especially four sectorals. They'll be at the end of the video because they can be a bit more advanced for newer players. So I'm going to go through uh, an action pack today, the Tartary Army Corps. Um, I've picked this one because it's the first army I started with um, at the end of sort of N3. I'm going to go through the models in turn, uh, what they do, um, how they function, and, and go from there, really. So... Um, I'll say goodbye to you. You'll see the video with the um, models and their pictures in a minute. And I'll point and sh see where the video comes from. Oh, one more thing, one more thing. Um, the army codes are in the description of this video, so you can look at them in the arm builder, um, helpfully near the like button. So like it to make me feel more worthwhile as a human being. So somewhere the video will appear and let's go. somewhere okay so we are starting off with the line kazakh here you will see the pictures of the kazakhs in the box in case you aren't sure who they are because they're all kind of wearing the same green camouflage this list has um three kazakhs in i have made one of them the lieutenant on this slide here you'll see also the options for line kazakhs they have quite a few options in case you want to change the way to run they are the basic line troops they've got some okay bs 11 Pretty much the lowest in the list. They're mainly there to provide orders to the rest of your um, army. They have a few options there to become specialists. They can become forward observers and power medics as well. In this case, because I'm playing with pure what you see is what you get uh, for new players, I've picked uh, simply one to be the um, lieutenant. So I guess decide which one you want to be first, which model you want to be your LT and uh, write it down somewhere. They will not really win out, win many, um, many gun contests. Any sort of per person with half decent skills will kill them, um, so I wouldn't really use them for AROs. I'd mainly keep them um, probably guarding flanks and mainly there to provide orders for your heavy hitters. Next up, we have the Tank Hunter. Here is the Tank Hunter in the center there. The model that comes in the box is equipped with a AP rifle, also an adhesive launcher and AP mines. The Tank Hunter is an interesting model. It is one of the many models in Ariadna that can be camouflage, which is very, very handy indeed for getting that first surprise attack. The AP rifle, obviously, um, is better at getting through armor than a normal rifle, but the range band's still on great, so I'd only use surprise attack when you're looking at a plus three band to really make sure that you can hurt someone some degree of reliability. That plus three band is between eight and 16 inches, which is quite an hour band really, but because they have camouflage, you can hopefully get to a decent band to really leverage that gunshot in your favor, especially with mimetism as well. You're looking at a minus six to your opponent, probably a minus nine when you cover as well, really giving you the chance to put in the hurt on someone. Other than that, they are slightly better than Lion Kazak. Their BS is slightly higher. And so they are they are good for sort of um, picking out a few targets here and there. Notably, also, they have stealth, which means when you are in camouflage state, or even when you're not, you can sneak around someone's zone of control. 
and even if you are in their zone of control, they can't react to you by um, turning around facing you. So you might even be able to get a shot in their back out of their zone of control, in which case they won't even get a face to face roll against you. Also, mines aren't to be sniffed at. AP mines can be a great way of controlling an area. Admittedly, the tank hunter would have to reveal themselves first to lair mine and then we can flog themselves, which can take quite a few orders to do that, but it's a great tool for controlling areas you don't want your opponent to go near. Next we have Vasily, pictured here. He has a similar pose to a tank hunter, uh, mainly because he is one. Vasily is armed with a T2 marksman rifle, an ICACT cologne, that's probably said completely wrong, and D chargers and a heavy pistol. The marksman rifle gives him great range bands, better than a normal rifle, and it being T2 means that he is pretty much going to kill someone when he hits them. Uh, a T2 does two wounds um, per shot, so someone will go from being fine to being dead if they have one wound rather than being unconscious. That said, the T2 marksman rifle still has only the damage of a, of a normal rifle, so it probably won't get through high armour targets, especially if they're in cover. Vasily is notable because he has decoy, so he can put down an extra token to show where he is. So there are two camouflage tokens per, per Vasily on the board, obviously only one Vasily because his character mode. but it can help burn up orders from your opponent. Also, he has chain of command, or can have chain of command. I've picked the chain of command model for this faction, um, mainly because it means if your Lycazac dies, he can take over and be the Lieutenant, meaning that you won't, you won't go into loss of Lieutenant for, for a turn. Especially seeing as he could be in camo state, which means he hasn't got to reveal himself. So if you're scared of your LT being in danger, he can stay camouflage state, leaving you to be able to um, not have a risk of losing your LT at all. He's basically a better tank hunter in every respect. He's got a better gun, he's got a better BS. Heavy pistol is also you know, a decent gun. It's got a plus three band up to eight inches and a good damage as well. So Vasily is, is pretty decent. Also, I've said to you before, this is a what you see is what you get army, because it's basically the action pack. That said, you can pretty much have his marksman rifle as being a sniper rifle, because it looks very, very similar indeed, giving him a much, much longer reach, which could be really useful for this list, meaning he can be there to ping off targets very early in the game, or maybe be an ARO piece, although probably I wouldn't have him do AROs too early on, because the chances are he might get killed to a lucky shot, and that way you've lost a good model that has chain of command. Anyway, that's Vasily. A better tank hunter, quite expensive, but a quite useful piece, and he allows you to put even more camo tokens on the board, which means that your opponent has no idea who's deployed and where they are. Now it's a scout, pictured there, looking all sneaky with his cloak and his shotgun. To fit the model that comes in the box, I have given him a boarding shotgun. He also has D-chargers and shock mines. Both the scout, the front of it, have D-chargers, allowing them to do some missions um, a lot more easily. The scout has, again, Good BS, for Ariadna at least, camouflage and surprise attack and mimetism, allowing him to get that first shot off against someone with a great degree of accuracy, quite like the tank hunter. The main difference between him and the other models in this list is he has infiltration, meaning he can deploy up to halfway up the board before the game starts. He could, in theory, um, roll a dice on, on minus three to deploy anywhere that's not your opponent's deployment zone, so he could roll on a physique roll minus three so on a 10 to deploy anywhere apart from your opponent's deployment zone personally i wouldn't do that because it's a coin flip effectively if you fail he has to deploy on your backboard edge so i'll just deploy him halfway up somewhere where he can't be easily reached allowing him to cause some disruption quite early on his boarding shotgun's got a small range but good damage and a very very high modifier plus six within eight inches which is very, very effective to say he's going to be close up in the face straight away. I would probably leave him to um, find a good target and pick it off. I wouldn't leave him to, I wouldn't allow him to get too close to too many models at once. And it's probably worth finding out what enemies you are facing have their own templates, because if he shoots at someone with this boarding shotgun, they might just decide to have their model um, shoot a template and die in the process, killing your scout, which is not ideal for you. So I, I try and shoot models that haven't got templates, like their own shotguns or chain rifles and the like, to ensure that you win the face-to-face -face roll and you survive afterwards. They have BS attack shock on every attack they make, meaning that anyone who gets a conscious is immediately killed. So if your opponent has quite a few paramedics, they can't heal someone who's been hit by a shock attack because they're dead. So the scout's a good model he can deploy in lots of places that your opponent really don't want to go. He has terrain total which can be useful, it very much depends upon the physical board you're playing on. The profile you see here also has, of course, other versions, um, Mine Layer, 
and Ford Observer. Ford Observer is, of course, very helpful because it's a specialist allowing you to do missions. Mine layer allows your scout to put down himself as a camera marker and another mine as a, another camera marker, meaning you can have the entire forest of them around the board as the game starts. Although, personally, if you're going to change the list and have mine layers, I'd use the Strelox, who are, who are mentioned later on in this video. The Ratnik is the chunky boy of the list. You see him there in the middle, pretty hard to miss with his massive hammer and rocket launchers. I have picked I have picked the profile that matches the version you see in the box, which means he comes with a heavy rocket launcher, plus one burst, and a heavy shotgun. A heavy rocket launcher, plus one burst, means he is firing three dice with a rocket launcher, firing basically a template at your opponent from a good range away. Also being able to ignore cover with a template, which can be very scary indeed. If he has some models that are close together, a rocket launcher could end his dreams real fast. It's also got good range bands between 16 and 32 plus 3. Um, damage 14 for a template with the burst 3, again, rather than a burst 2, which really increases the chances of a good face-to-face -face for him. Also his shotgun. His shotgun is similar to a boarding shotgun in terms of it has a plus 6 range band between 0 and 8. So the Rennick has a weird situation where he has um, a plus 6 band, 0 to 8, and then a plus 3 band, 16 to 32. Uh, between 8 and 16 he has plus 0 band, um, but, but there you go I guess. He is able to take a hit, once he's in cover it's got armor 9, which means he is quite tanky. Also he has, he has a good BS of 13. Worth noting here that because he has um, transformation, if he gets healed with paramedic, he doesn't go back to his previous state. So, for example, if he gets hit once and he turns into his battle ravage state, if he gets and then gets knocked unconscious, if somehow he gets healed two wounds, he doesn't go back to his um, his base state. He only becomes battle, battle ravaged instead. Even though he's a big boy and looks a bit like a tag, he can still crouch and he can still dodge, albeit with physique of nine. But in cover, he's quite hard to shift. So I'd try to keep him at, keep him at long range and fire those templates to really punish any models that are close together because a damage 14 rocket launcher with continuous damage, which means as they fail damage rolls, they have to cannon rolling, can be very scary indeed and really keep your opponent wanting to keep free of fire lanes that Uranic is staring down. It's time for the Strelok. I'm a bit of a Strelok fan, so if I sound biased, I, well, I am. The Strelok's look a little like a scout. There he is with his rifle crouching down under the hood. He's got a bit of a skull face, you can see there, looking a bit into the scout. The Strelok does a very similar job to the Scout in many respects. The profile here is armed with a T2 Marksman rifle, the same rifle that Vizilla's armed with, again enabling to ping off targets at a decent range and do them um, two wounds if he manages to get through. The profiles we'll see here, the Strelok has, first of all, similar to the Scout, he has um, camouflage. Rather than having infiltration, he has 4.8 inches and decoy. So rather than being able to deploy halfway up, he can deploy 8 inches out of your deployment zone, which is roughly the same thing. It's not quite as flexible, but it's very close to being the same thing. Uh, also with decoy, it means he can put down a camouflage token, that's not him. Combined with other people in your army, you can put down many, many camera tokens that will burn up your opponent's orders while he's trying to find the right person. Again, because this list is what you see is what you get, I've given him the marksman rifle. Uh, I will probably try and get some mine layers in there. If you like if you like mines, if you play the game and you enjoy putting down mines and even more templates that your opponent doesn't know what they are until they literally blow up in their face, I recommend taking the Strelak mine layer. He's great for 21 points. You put down three tokens. That means a camouflage token of the Strelok, one of the decoy, and one of the mine. Um, and he can really help gum up the midfield full of tokens, making your opponent have to walk through, through them very slowly and carefully, making them burn up orders before they get to you. So the Strelok is a very versatile piece. I really like him. He has a bit of a lower BS than the Scout, but again, because... He is camouflage. You can generally move him to a range band you want him to be in to do his job. So, for example, the, the marks of my fault, you can move him between 8 and 24 for his plus 3, which is a good solid range band, much better than the rifle. Alternatively, if you've got a boarding shotgun, you move him, of course, within 8. Or if you've got a submachine gun, again, generally speaking, you can also then move him within 8 as well. So, the Strelok is a versatile piece and he can do a lot of, a lot of good work. The front of Vic here, looking pretty similar to the tank hunters until you get used to them. The front of it is a good medium infantry, 
he's basically a bit better than most of the people in the list at shooting, apart from the veteran Kazak. He has movement is minus three and BS 12, meaning those face faces give him a bit of the edge. The model here is listed on the CB website is of an engineer, so that's the one I've, what I've made him, making him a specialist, allowing him to do missions, armed with a T2 rifle and D charges. A T2 rifle, again, same range bands as a normal rifle, plus six between eight and 16. Same damage as well as um, every other T2 weapon in the, in the army, so two wounds per hit. Notably here, he has D charges for missions, but also he has an assault pistol. Assault pistols are great little guns, four shots within eight inches meaning if he manages to get near someone, he's got um, he's going to have cover, he's going to have mutism, and he's got four shots coming in at someone, and that's assuming he's not part of a fire team, which I'll talk about later on. So he's able to really throw a lot of dice at someone, and often in these sorts of games, the more dice you can throw at someone, the more reliable they'll be, and therefore the more likely you are to win that face-to-face -face role. So he's generally just a bit of a solid trooper. He has veteran, which means that if you do end up having a loss of lieutenants, he doesn't care too much. I've currently put the wrong picture there at the front of Vic um, on, on the profile picture. See, they're so hard to tell the difference, even I get it wrong. Um, but there you go. Um, if I was going to change the list, I may give him the sniper rifle, uh, mainly because it also gives him a multispectral visor at level 1. Uh, Ariadna is quite low on these visors, and he would be the only person in the list with one. And so that would be a situation I'd want to avoid having. Um, so I'd probably give him that visor, allowing him to see through smoke at a pinch, but also break through mimetism, which of course is pretty common nowadays. So as a front of it, a solid trooper, he's decent at combat, and he has a lot of options to make him a specialist and also put him in fire teams as well. Of course, as I said to you before, fire teams will be mentioned later on. I have saved my favourite piece to last it is the veteran Kazakh. I think no matter what list you take in TAC, you'll probably see him in it in one variation or another. Quite distinctive there with his heavier armour and his gas mask on. I've taken him with um, a tutor rifle and light foam fur because again that is the model that comes in the box. I made him a forward observer because a, another specialist is always a good thing. The veteran Kazakh is it's great really. Um, quite expensive. He has BS-13, best in the list, or joint best in the list with the Ratnik. He has um, very good armour as well. He has immune to shock and no wound incapacitation. That means he can take effectively two wounds. His first wound will knock him out, but because he's got no wound in cap, he means he can still walk around fine. Um, that with mimetism minus three, meaning he has um, good face-to-face -face options and he can take a single hit and carry on going, which only the Ratnik can apart from him. Also, like the front of it, he has Veteran, which means he's not scared by loss of lieutenants or by being isolated by hacking. He has Sixth Sense 2, which means anyone who's got stealth, who comes near him, he can react to them even if they are in his own control and he can't see them normally. It also means he can respond normally to attacks through smoke or to attacks normally he can't see. So effectively, he can't be hit from the back or through smoke without the chance to react to it, making him a lot more able to responds to any shenanigans your opponent has. He's overall a great piece, and I always take one, or maybe even two in an army I take. When you can expand outwards from here, either proxying, as, a, as I've said to you before, I'm not proxying for this list, but um, if you want to proxy or buy the model, I recommend getting the one with the AP heavy machine gun, making him a real beast in combat, face-to-face -face roles, and he can really can shred things, especially when part of a fire team. So the veteran Kazakh is a superb gunfighter, probably the best in the list, and I would never leave home without them. Fire teams. Looking here, you can make a decent fire team with the Line Kazakhs and the Funtovic. It'd be a pure fire team, meaning that you can take the Funtovic, Line Kazakhs, um, so maybe a Funtovic sniper, and um, the Line Kazakhs to help them out, meaning you'd have a Funtovic sniper with, with a BS 15 and plus on burst, which is quite nice. Kazakhs, veteran Kazakhs tend to go in a Harris, so you'll probably see, for example, um, you'll probably see one veteran Kazakh with two front of Vicks behind him to support him. Um, I don't think I'd make a, a fire team with more than one veteran Kazakh in because they're very, very expensive indeed. Ranic fire team, I've got to be honest, I haven't tried it. It seems very expensive. I'll probably give it a go for a laugh, but um, I'm not sure how well it'll do. That said, having a heavy rocket launcher with four shots sounds like great fun. So I should give it, give that a go at some point. So the question I'm sure you're all asking well, a question you're probably all asking is where next? Well, I built a, another list here with some extra box sets. I 
intentionally designed this list to require as few purchases as possible and a bit of proxying here and there. So first of all, the main list is the same again because you bought the action pack, so you should use it. What I've done here is I have first of all put in there two Irmantinos. They are very, very useful warband models. They have an irregular and an impetuous order. I think they're great. The eight point versions I think are great value. First of all, they've got booty, which you can never rely on because it's a random roll to get some cool loot, but you never know. But they have, first of all, they have smoke grenades so they can run forward and throw smoke grenades to cover their advance throwing smoke grenade near where they are walking towards so within eight inches looking at throwing smoke grenade on a 17 which is superb if they die you don't mind too much so i wouldn't probably use their chain rifles in the active turn because they're going to dodge on a roll probably better than a coin flip doesn't sound very good to me but you can keep them tucked in corners and provide great pieces in your turn to give aros to your opponent also if for example this if, for example, you're playing a scenario that involves pushing buttons at consoles, the fact they are engineers with smoke grenades means they can get up the board pretty quickly, early, early doors, and push buttons and generally get in the way. They can trade up very, very well. You could always move forward and threaten an attack to force face-to-face -face roll um, or force your to dodge or shoot back, um, in which case you might sacrifice your Imanido for a model of high points value. I think they're superb value and I find it hard to have a list without a few of them in. Um, secondly, I've put in there a, another Strelok. This time around, I'm doing what I said earlier, I put a Strelok in there with a boarding shotgun and mine layer, meaning you have more midfield board control. Very, very useful little piece there. Really can help jam up the midfield and force your opponent to spend orders clearing mines rather than killing your dudes. Finally, I have used the Ariadna support box set here, you'll see, to put in there a 112 and a Kazakh Doctor. The Kazakh Doctor can go in fire teams, as the previous talk of fire teams will show you, and so can the 112. So you've got options there for a five person fire team, in which you can put, for example, um, three Kazakhs, a Funtovic in there and a doctor making a five person pure fire team. Also, you could put, for example, a veteran Kazakh, a Funtovic, and a 112 in a Harris fire team. So, this box set allows you to have two specialists, both of which are paramedics or doctors, allowing you to heal your own side, but also both of them can go in fire teams, giving you a five person and a three person fire team. So there we go, hopefully that was an interesting, informative and generally fantastic video for you, telling you about how to use Tarty Army Corps, uh, in particular how to use the action pack and how to get involved in Infinity. Oh, throw it off then, very professional. Hopefully this video was informative to you. I didn't cover all the bases. I didn't, for example, review the whole faction for Tarty Army Corps. There's way more options here than um, I went through in this short video designed to be an introduction. And of course, part of the fun of getting involved in, in a faction is really exploring it further and this only scratches the surface of that so hopefully you liked it or oh, by liked it did you like it you're gonna give a like you won't even listening to this are you probably all turned off by now because the stats say the figures do do that like a like fall off a cliff really so i'm probably talking to myself really just just me talking now no one else is listening to this really so i should probably just stop talking and make some tea this isn't actually tea, it's empty. <laughs> it's not all empty. I was pretending to drink, but I've got wet trousers now. Um, I'm, I'm going to go. It's been a while since I've recorded a video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm going to do more for, uh, content for Infinity because turns out the game's pretty good. Who knew, really? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's decent. Hopefully you like Infinity. If you don't, I don't know how you found the video in the first place. Really, I mean, give give it a try. It's it's great. Um, it's it's good, and the rules aren't that bad, especially given the mess some some games are. It doesn't require thirty rule books and pages full of stratagems, for example, like some games do. I'm still talking for some reason, aren't I? So I'm gonna I'm gonna go. Yeah, gonna go. I'm gonna go.